last speaker tonight works as a full-time research assistant in the research group for lifespan changes in brain and cognition. He's particularly interested in how processes occurring in the brain during sleep and waking rest can lead to improved memory without us even knowing it. He recently completed his master's program in cognitive neuroscience here in Oslo, and the topic of his master's thesis was related to what he's going to talk to us about tonight. Yeah. But instead of presenting his thesis, he's going to use this time to persuade both himself and the rest of us to take sleep even more seriously. It's crucial also to our memory. Like many of us in our often sleep-deprived society, he has noticed that his attitude towards sleep is a little on the slack side, with sleeping patterns that have left room for improvement. Considering that we spend, or should at least, spend about a third of our lives asleep, he thinks it's time we start looking at this nightly activity in a more positive light. Please welcome on stage, James Rowe. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, we've known for a long time that sleep has a positive impact on memory. So we probably all experienced this ourselves. Say you're up late one night studying for an exam and it just feels like nothing's going in. And then you wake up the next morning with your thoughts streaming about the information that you learned the night before. But it was only recently that researchers uh, were able to show the mechanisms of what was happening in the brain to newly formed memories while we sleep. And what they showed was when mice learned a new task, uh, brain cells that were activated during the learning of that task formed new spines. And when the mice slept afterwards, these same brain cells became activated again. And when that happened, these spines then grew and formed new connections with other cells in the network. And disrupting this reactivation through sleep uh, was enough to disrupt the formation of the memory. And in another study, uh, researchers mapped the brain activity of mice to a particular place in a room. And when the mice slept and this place cell was then activated, they then paired this activation with stimulation of the reward network and were able to place a false memory in the mouse's brain because the next day, the mouse spent a lot more time in this part of the room. And this re-engagement of the brain mechanisms that were involved in the learning process uh, is a recurrent theme throughout the memory life cycle. So from when we first experience something to when we later consolidate it and strengthen in memory uh, to when we consciously retrieve it. So if the sleeping brain can take information that we learn throughout the day and strengthen it in memory, then how does it know which information is worth holding on to and which just simply isn't? And I want to show you how selective this process can be. And it's been likened to a triage, and a triage is a medical station during a war where treatment was given out according to a system designed to maximize the number of survivors. So what is it that determines whether, determines whether a memory will survive and receive treatment and survive? Well, we know that fear um, is the shortcut to memory, <laughs> and uh, the fear is a shortcut to memory, and the emotional experiences in our life we process to a greater degree simply because these are the ones that are worth adapting to in the future should a similar situation arise. So we would expect then that the sleeping brain would also give uh, privileged processing to emotional memories. And there seems to be some evidence for this. So one study shows people um, a scene, a very cluttered scene, or a series of very cluttered scenes with some emotional components in the scene. And then they show that only after a period of sleep are people able to remember the emotional components out of that scene. So the sleep has selected out what's important. And if I was to show you two sets of items to memorize, and then tell you only after you'd attempted to memorize them both that only one of them you'll be tested on tomorrow, uh, you find that after a period of sleep, but not after a period of time awake, will you be able to remember more of the ones that I've now made relevant to your future? And so this seems to be the key to deciding what information gets processed as we sleep. It's making the information relevant for your future by providing some kind of motivator like reward or money. And this works also for forgetting. So if you show people 
uh, a bunch of different words, and some of them are cute to remember and others are cute to forget, you will find that only after a period of sleep is the brain able to separate it out so that you remember far more of what you were told to remember and you forget far more of what you were told to forget. And the really cool thing is this unconscious memory processing may be happening, at least in the deepest stages of sleep, in our dreams. So this study showed people a virtual maze and woke people up afterwards. And the people that were reported dreaming about elements of the maze were the ones uh, that remembered the maze far better. So it seems that the sleeping brain can do things that the waking brain just can't do. Because when we're awake, we're constantly bombarded by new information. And when we sleep and shut down the external demands of the world, uh, we're able to use time to process the information that you've accumulated over a busy day. I mean, there's got to be a reason why children need to sleep a lot more than adults, right? That's also related to memory. They have so little figured out about the world that they need the extra time to be able to consolidate the information that they've learned. And sleep is also very good at extracting the gist of situations. So, and, and false memories are also created by this. So if you were to show people a list of words like this, most people would falsely report that sleep was on that list, the word sleep, when in actual fact, that's just the word that's drawing everything together, right? It's not there. So it extracts the gist of the situation. And you can ask, is it even beneficial to have a memory system that is characterized by a high degree of accuracy when the point of the system is it's evolved to allow an organism to reference its own personal past in order to maximize its survival chances in the future. It may be that such a system is more, it benefits more from extracting the rules that can apply to one situation that could potentially apply to another and forget the details. And as a result of this, we know that uh, we are not very good at remembering things that happen in our lives to very accurately because memory is a constructive process where we're always constructing the bits of our past or piecing together bits of our past to create a coherent story. So it seems that sleep may be a great way to take the important parts of our past with us into the future. And we're constantly constructing our own futures, like when we think about what you're going to do over the Easter break or how the big side of presentation is going to go. Uh, the, the point is that the past may only be as relevant as it helps us predict our future. And so often it may be best that we can just forget the details, zoom out, and take with us the bigger picture in memory. Thank you.